You've mentioned audience segmentation work that you did. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, yes, uh, Audience Lives London were eventually able to provide us with a segmentation which we worked on with them. Um, and it, it was a kind of five-tier segmentation. Um, at, the, at the apex, if you like, was that kind of area of music professionals I'd already mentioned. And what we came up with for each of the segments was in a sense uh, an identification of what their needs were, what they might expect from the new organisation. Um, and also a sense of how they might want to be communicated with, um, what kind of mode of communication they might they might most like, and what the possibility was to develop that particular area, whether it be membership or whether we looked at some other area. So as I say, we started off with that kind of new music professional layer, and it was fairly clear the kind of things that they might want in terms of, you know, they were probably going to be members of the organisation, they were going to want a lot of inside track, they were going to want a lot of networking support and so on and, and so forth, probably be service users of the organisation. So all of that was important to keep them on board. Then we had a kind of layer behind that of kind of into new music which I suppose refers back primarily to that kind of 20-30% of people that I mentioned first up who were typically live event attenders of the organisation. That area of our work would be very important for them. It might be possible to progress them in, in terms of membership. Typically they might well use um, communication tools like the wire or other such things to find out what was what was going on. They'd probably be quite clued on in that way, so going through those channels was important for that particular segment. Then as I recall behind that layer we had a layer called artist intellectuals <laughs> who were um, people that would come into contact with us but might often have a very wide interest in terms of the arts of which new music might only be one. Um, they might well go through more mainstream channels like, for example, The Guardian for their information or that kind of thing. Um, uh, you know, and they like the feeling of being cool, of being part of, you know, being part of a cool scene was important to them. Then we had a group behind that which we, I think we called experience seekers. You know, the kind of people that might turn up at a festival or event, but not necessarily name check your your brand, um, who would be perhaps into it for some kind of emotional response or simply because they wanted to come across something different. Um, they probably wouldn't be membership material but they might well be the kind of people that would respond to SMS or something like that in terms of a communication tool. And then we came across a group called, we had a kind of group called Accidentals, which were our kind of untapped potential, if you like. People that might not have even had much involvement with us at that point. People like the people that came to our total immersion exercise, uh, you know, who might not have experienced new music at all, but have an interest in the arts generally. They might not care about sound and music at all as an organisation, but we're prepared to try something different on a one-off basis just to see how it went. And we had quite a lot of understanding of what those people might want from the primary research we'd done before. So that was a segmentation, and of course, like all segmentations, um, the scope for growth increases the further down you go. Uh, but then, of course, the potential to bring them up the chain uh, is correspondingly harder with each of those areas. So you have to kind of mix and match your approach, if you like.